Well, good morning. Good to see you guys today. Hey, if you're new here, like Pastor Brandon said, it's so good to have you. If you don't know me yet, my name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here. And man, if you've been here for a while, we just love that you're a part of the family. It's going to be a good day. And I hope uh, through that scripture that God was already preparing your heart for what we're going to talk about today. But I wanted to let you in on a season of my life that probably lasted about a year to a year and a half. And I don't know about you, whether you're a present thinker or a forward thinker, but I'm a very forward thinker, which can be very good, (laughs) but it can have its negatives too. Uh, And I remember the season where I knew the general outcome of where I was, general direction of where I was going. I didn't know specifically because God had just used several uh, people in my life to speak into me that this is, this is what you're going to do with your life. And I remember as I was going through the next year, year and a half, just preparing for it, there were some things that I was really, really excited about, but there were things about this general direction that I was super, super nervous and worried and anxious about. And I don't know if you've ever faced this before, but uh, like this is how bad guys it got for me at times. Like there'd be times where I'd go to bed just worried about my future and it have, hadn't even happened yet. I'm like, my gosh, I'm not even facing it yet. I'm already worried about it. Or, or I'd wake up in the morning sometimes with just this dread of what I was going to have to face someday in my future. And I'm like, I, I, I don't even have the, the spe- specific path yet, but I'm worried about the general path. Or there'd be times in my day where I would just start getting nervous about what I'd have to face in my future. It was, it was really, really bad. And I just wanted to share with you that, because sometimes you know, people think pastors, they never go through it. They kind of just read the scriptures and say, trust God. <laughs> and, and that's just not the case. I mean, we go through it and face it as well. And, and now I want to turn the attention to you. Have, have you ever uh, been affected negatively by worry or anxiety? Uh, maybe there's been a place where you just couldn't sleep because you're just so uneasy about something. Or, or maybe your mind is so cluttered with the what ifs that you can't focus straight. Or maybe the sensation of dread is so real physically for you that you just kind of have this like knot in your stomach or your, your heart's beating a little bit faster. I, I think we could all say... Wherever we fall on the spectrum, I think we can all say that there are times where we've been through, maybe it's not as bad as what I just described, but we've had worries and anxieties before. Because all of us from time to time face everyday worries, whether it's an unknown outcome like, man, am I going to get this job? This job is really important to me. Am I going to, this work project that's coming, is it going to, is it going to do well? I just want to, I just want to make sure I'm in with the boss and, you know, this could really be a stepping stone for my career or, or it could be, uh, you know, something about how many of you have had more month than money? Uh, I think we've all been there. I've been there where it's like, are we going to, guys, there was one time we ended the month with $2.43 in our checkbook. Woo! <laughs> but we made it. It's a kind of as close as you can get, right? Like, okay, thank you, God. <laughs> you know, uh, it wasn't like the abundant month, but it was a provision month, right? So uh, we've had those ty- types of times. Uh, maybe it, Maybe you've been in an awkward social situation before where the group was either too big or you got called on in public to say something or to do something. You're like, "Ah, I can't do this. Maybe, again, I said this before, it's being nervous about a work project or a work presentation. Maybe it's even as big as the state of our world. It's like, man, it's just so crazy out there. And that produces a worry or anxiety in you. You know, for some... Anxiety can be so consistent. It's not just from time to time. It can be very, very consistent. And this type of anxiety can be really debilitating to someone's everyday life. But I want to say, wherever you're at on the spectrum, whether it's facing it from time to time or it's just a consistent, everyday type of battle, there really is hope for you. There really, really is hope for you. Say it with me. There's hope for me. Say it like you believe it. There's hope for me. 
there really, really is hope for you. So let me say a couple things up front. This, this might not shock you, but I just read this week that anxiety disorders are the largest, uh, most widely spread mental disorder in the U.S. currently. And so I just want to say up front, we realize anxiety is a big topic. We don't pretend to have all the answers. We're not professional therapists or counselors. We know we're not going to hit everything within a 30-minute message, okay? Um, that's the first thing I want to say. I also want to say, if you've been battling for a while, you may need a professional. Don't be ashamed if you do. If my arm was broken, I shouldn't be ashamed to go to the doctor and say, Doc, fix me, right? Um, but even if you don't face it and are battling with it consistently, even if you face it from time to time, don't necessarily, and you don't necessarily feel you need a professional, don't be ashamed to go to a friend or mentor. The whole point is wherever you land on this spectrum, whether it's consistent or from time to time, please get help as you need it. Because we say this often at Obi-Wan Church, and we really mean it. It's not just a saying for us. It's okay to not be okay. But what do we add to that? But it doesn't have to stay that way. So it's okay to not be okay, but it doesn't have to stay that way. And I believe along with getting help from others, I think it's crucial that we turn to God. That's why we have hope today to find his power and perspective about our anxiety and worry. So we're going to look at the Bible because first Peter has some really helpful direction for us. Now, again, just a, just a couple other clarifiers. It doesn't mean that if you do everything that it says in 1 Peter, that it's encouraging you that your anxiety, poof, it's gone, right? God can do anything he wants, and I'm not minimizing, and he does it at times, but oftentimes God does things progressively, and he helps us progressively, and he heals us progressively. I also want to say this helpful direction is not all-encompassing. And what I mean by that is there, there's, these aren't the only things that will help. It's one piece of the Bible. Okay? Again, the goal within a 30-minute message is to try to offer hope and some helpful direction. Okay? So say it again. There's hope for me. There really is. We're going to go to it right now. It says this in 1 Peter 5. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. You know, one of the ways to explain humility is that it's not thinking about yourself, uh, uh, thinking less about yourself. We often get confused with that, that we have to think less of ourselves, like I'm not worthy, I'm terrible, I'm trash. That has nothing to do with humility at all. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself, it's having a high view of God. See the difference? Still being confident in who you are, still knowing that you have value, knowing that you're not trash, but having a high view of God. And one of the reasons we can have a high view of God is because of His mighty hand. When we're humble and trusting, His hand lifts us up. It says it right in the verse. It's a hand that protects us, a hand that can deliver us from difficult situations. It's a hand that can deliver us from our worries as we learn to trust him with our cares. You see, humility with trust can lead to more peace and less worry in your life, and you might wonder how. Here's how. Part of humility just a, just a piece of it. I'm not saying it's all of it. Part of humility is knowing that you don't have all the answers. See, we think of all the answers. What if this? What if that? What if it goes this way? What if it goes that way? It's like, why am I even thinking about these 99 different directions when you have the answer? 
You know what it's going to be already. And because you're good and because you're gracious, it's going to be awesome. Now, I'm not pretending that life will always turn out the way you want. If you've been with us on this journey in 1 Peter, he talks a lot about suffering and that every human, it's not, that we're not immune to it, every human goes through suffering at times. But the point is, even through difficult times, God is with us and caring for us no matter what, and His mighty hand can lift us up. God in humility, I don't have the answers. I'm not in control. I'm wasting my time with the 99 what ifs. But you are in control. In your time, would you please take care of this? Here's, a, here's another verse that shows why we can trust and have a high view of God. We're going to skip down to verse 10 and then come back to 7. It says this. It says, and the God of all grace. Notice it doesn't say of little grace or, you know, he plays favorites at times with his grace, that he's stingy about it depending on how he woke up in the morning. You take your most gracious, I want you to think about the most gracious person you have in your life, and God blows them out of the water because he has all grace. The only reason we have grace is because he has it. Because we're created in His image. Grace was His idea. He's the God of all grace. And it says He will Himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. You notice what it says in the verse? It says, after you have suffered a little while. It's inferring that hard things won't last forever. And I actually think that makes our worry and anxieties worse. When it goes longer than we think, part of the worry is like, is this going to go on forever? Like I've had the, I, a couple times in my life, it's been so bad, I've had to have so much focus on pushing away my anxieties and worries, and it lasted for so long. I'm like, man, am I ever going to get over this hump, or are my worries always going to overcome me? And so I get it. God, it's hard right now, but you tell me in 1 Peter, that it won't last forever. You tell me that you'll use your power and goodness not to hoard your power, but to help me and restore me. You tell me, even though I feel weak, because when I'm worried, when I'm anxious, I feel weak. I feel, you've, you've heard the song, I feel weak in the knees, right? Um, I won't sing it for you, just to spare you. Um, we feel weak when we worry, when we're anxious. And God's saying, I will make you strong and steady. Do you see how humility and trust can take away our worries and actually bring peace and calm to our hearts and minds? We're replacing worry with trust that God will take care of us. Instead of the unknown gnawing at you, what if, what if, what if, what if? You're at peace knowing who cares about the what ifs because God knows what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen and he's got it. God, you will figure it out. You will lift me up in your time and it will be good. You will take care of me. Let's go deeper by continuing in 1 Peter. We're going to go back to verse 7. It says this. It says, cast all your anxiety on him. Notice doesn't, it doesn't say, well, I have some small worries, but 
God's probably a little bit too busy for those. Um, you know what? I have some big worries. I want to give it to him, but I just don't know if he can handle it. It just seems so impossible to me, so I don't know how he's going to do it. No, it says cast all small, medium, large, heck, 7-Eleven extra large, right? Whatever the, whatever the care is, wherever it falls, cast all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. So we find out in verse 6 that he can handle it because he has a mighty hand. And we find out in verse 7 that he can handle it because he cares for us. He's not just a God, as I said earlier, that hoards His power for Himself. He uses His power to help us because He cares for us. Guys, we have so many cares, don't we? We have personal... And again, don't feel bad about that. It's just part of the normal human condition. We, we all have cares. We have personal cares like... Well, I get this job and you know, I care about my influence and I care about making a difference and I... You know, I care about my looks. I want to look good. And, you know, take away our personal cares now. We have relational cares. How's my kids doing? How's my family members? How's my friends? You know, I really don't, like, I don't really feel like, speaking of friends, I really don't feel like I have money, many. So now I'm starting to get worried about being lonely. We worry about past regrets still haunting us. We're wor- wondering if they're going to come out of the closet and destroy us and catch up to us. We have a fear of failure in the present. We're like, what should I even try this because what if I fail we have fears about and worries about an unknown future and if that wasn't enough turn on the freaking TV listen to the radio scroll through social media and if that wasn't enough Go to your latest, greatest gossip hour at work. Worry, stress, and anxieties, they really do abound. Now, I said it already. There's nothing wrong with caring and having concern. But it can quickly turn into worry and anxiety that's unhealthy and unproductive for us. Because sometimes we focus so much on our worries that we forget that God has a mighty hand and that he cares for us and that he really can happen. And this is what we often do when the cares become our focus. And some of you have seen this before, but it's just such a good visual reminder. Again, sometimes with our small cares, we don't even bring them to God. In some ways, because we're just so used to carrying them, we don't even know life without our small cares. And and some, it's because... uh, God has greater things to do in this world than to do this small thing for me. So we carry these small cares. And then we have some medium cares that that we're struggling with, whatever those are. I don't want to define them for you. And then sometimes we have these, man, that's even heavy not going into this bag. Yeah, this is going to be brutal. Um, Sometimes we have some really, really big cares and we really are wondering, God, can you handle these things this this just seems impossible to me and before you know it we're carrying can i get it on yeah we're carrying these huge weights and when they go unaddressed it just becomes heavier and heavier not be, for two reasons. One, because we add more. And number two, we're so tired of carrying the burdens already that the, even if the weight stays the same, we're getting more tired. We have to understand, and some of you might want to write this down, what we carry affects the way we feel. You may want to write that down. What we carry affects the way we feel. You bet, and I've done this before. In fact, my wife the other day, the loving, gracious, we were on a hike. In the middle of the hike, 
And she adds more weight to the backpack. Oh, you can handle it. Sure. <laughs> You're not the one carrying it. And I'm just teasing, of course, but think about it, guys. As I carry this, I carry this through first service, too. I already have an effect like right above my, my back right here. And, and usually what happens when we're on a hike or I'm starting to get tired um, and it's a heavy backpack, my neck starts to hurt right here and it goes all the way down to the middle part of my back. What's happening? I'm affected by what I carry. Guys, we do the same thing with our worries and anxieties. We carry them instead of giving them to God, who tells us to give them to Him, we carry them, and it affects us spiritually, mentally, and even physically. And one of the reasons worries gets the best, best of us, and I've already been talking about this a little bit, we're really good at playing the what-if game. It's like, what if I... Man, I've tried it this a few times already. What if I try again and fail? What if my kids never make it out of the place that they're in right now? They're, they're, it's so hard for them right now. What if, what if I'm, man, I've been lonely for a little while now. What if I'm always lonely? Or man, I finally, it's a positive this time. You finally get a friend and you're already worried, are they going to leave too? What if God doesn't come through? What if he was just making it up in 1 Peter 5 just to make me feel good on Sundays when the pastor speaks? Because Mondays in the Bible don't count, right? <laughs> it's just Sundays. What, 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 what if God doesn't come through? What if my situation never gets better? See, when the what if game is ruling our lives, it can get really heavy, just like this backpack is starting to get heavier. It can crush us into pieces, and it makes us feel like we're split in several different directions. Take, take one example, and I'll go back to a job because we've all faced that before. What if I do get the job? Well, what about the interview? Or, or what if I hate the job? Or what if I hate my boss? Or over here, what if I don't get the job? What am I going to do? Do you see how we can, just with one subject, we can split ourselves in like nine different directions? That's why God says, cast all of your anxiety, even the one-pounders. Trust me with the 99-pounders, but even the one-pounders, because one-pounders can add up to 99 if you don't get them out of the bag. God, I'm losing the what-if game. It's getting the best of me, but, but I don't need to play it. I can let my worries go and place them in your hands. I, I can't handle the weight, but I know you can. I trust you. My wife, Robin, she likes to, and she's not perfect at this. She still deals with worry and anxieties, but this is something that has really helped her at times. Uh, she, she's someone that likes to turn her what-ifs into even-ifs, and you might want to do the same thing. She turns her what-ifs into her even-ifs. She's like, you know, even if the worst what-if happens, God, you still love me, you're still in control, and you will get me through this. Do you see how powerful trust can be? It can be so powerful. But see, it not only takes trust and faith to place our worries on him, it takes trust and faith not to take them back. Right? It's just like, okay, God, I'm gonna, I, we, we hope that, you know, Pastor Brandon already talked about it. We're going to do it at the end of service today. It's like, you, you're going to give your worries over to God. You're going to do it. You're going to place it in His hands. But Monday, don't say to Him, just kidding, God. I want them back, right? It's going to take faith to keep them in His hands because life's hard enough without this on my back. <laughs> it's starting to hurt in the same area again down here. 
Here's four things we can do real quickly to strengthen our faith and trust him so that we'll place our worry in his hands and keep them there. Here's the first one. Number one, share my specific worries with God. You know, it says this in Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, look at this, in anything and in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Have you ever had a situation where you just shared with a family member or a mentor or a friend and they really didn't solve the problem, but you felt so much better afterwards? Why? Because you shared it. You got the load off of your chest. God wants us to do the same thing. But this is why I said share my specific worries. It's not just going to God saying, God, I'm worried. No, you're going him to, to say, I'm worried about my kids and here's why. I'm worried that I'm not going to make it this month and here's why. I'm worried that my future is going to mess with me. I'm worried that I'm going to fail and that's going to take me backwards. You're going to specifically go to God specifically and give, you, give Him your worries. You don't have to be ashamed. He cares for you, and He already knows. He's not up there saying, well, since you put it that way, I don't think I'm going to help now. You're freaking me out. This is too much. No, He's like, since you put it that way, I'm here to help. Be specific. But it, sharing your worries is the first step, and I'll tell you why. As I've grown in my faith journey, I remember a season where I'd hold on to verses like Philippians 4, where it says, don't be anxious with anything, talk to God about it, and I'm like, why am I still anxious? It's like, I, I was, I, even like my prayers were anxious, I'm like, why am I still worried? Does Philippians 4 not work? No, it works. It's just I had to grow in my understanding that it can't just be about sharing my worries. Number two, I also have to focus on his character, knowing that he can handle it, knowing that he has the mighty hand that we talked about in 1 Peter 5, 6, trusting that he cares about me from 1 Peter 5, 7, and that he will do it. You know, I've often heard it said, and I think it's a really good point, that when we don't see God's mighty hand at work, we trust his heart in the meantime. Simply put, focus on his character. He has a good heart. He's the God of all grace, like the verse says. He, he, as I've said a couple times already, he uses his power to help. He doesn't hoard. His character is awesome. He's loving and gracious. Because you see, others may forget about you. We get worried. Am I, am I going to just be insignificant in this life? But he remembers you. When the job doesn't fully provide, he still finds a way. When you use, uh, lose your youth or your looks or your influence, the world might place value in those things, but he still finds value in you. And guess what? We're all going to lose our youth and looks, <laughs> okay? And he'll still find just as much value in us. When you're lonely, he watches over you. When you're unsure about the future, he's wise and he has a solution. Number three, just going deeper with this, thank him ahead of time. You know, I just mentioned that God has the answer and he's faithful. Sometimes thanking him for what he will do can turn our worries into thankfulness. You know, Robin, this is a recent thing with, with Robin and I. We've been going through a struggle for, man, several months now. And it's probably one of the hardest, most difficult struggles we've ever been through. And when I say that, I'm not talking about between the two of us. It's like PK gossip hours. Why is Robin and PK not looking at each other? They didn't hold hands out in the patio. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to them? Um, no, 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 I'm not talking about between me and Robin. It's something as a couple that we're facing together. And it's one of the most, like I said, it's one of the most important things. We, and that's probably why it's been so hard, because it's so important to us. 
And I remember just a few couple weeks ago, just once again, we, we've tried our best to continue to cast this worry on, on God. And I'm talking about several months. I'm not talking about one time. And it's like, ah, you know, I'm just like repeatedly, you know, casting this worry on God. And then a couple weeks ago, it was so cool. God spoke three words to me, and it made all the difference. And I'm no one special. Sometimes people think, oh, God only speaks to pastors. No, he doesn't. He can speak to anyone that's listening. It doesn't say in the Bible, if you're a pastor, you just have this little extra frequency on your knob. Oh, God, cool. It's like, no. And I, I'm vulnerable with you these because we go through the same things. We have to wonder. We're confused. We have our worries, and we have to go to God. And, and pretty much what the three words were, pretty much, is he was telling me that he's got it. And so ever since, and I'm telling you guys, it's the most peaceful I've been in several months when thinking about this. Not that I haven't had peace at all in my life, but when thinking about this struggle that we're facing, when he spoke it, it was like, it was like the burdens melted away, and he's like, I've got this. And that so much peace came to me. And so, and I'm not saying it's been perfect and I haven't had any anxiety or I've done this every time that I've thought of it, but what has helped me so much ever since he spoke that to me was just to thank him ahead of time. He hasn't done it yet, but now I'm saying, thank you, God, that you've got this. Thank you that you're going to take care of this. This is what you told me. This wasn't bad pizza one night. I, you specifically spoke to my spirit and it was three words that I needed to hear, and I'm going to hold on to them. Thank you that you've got this. For you. God, I don't know what you're going to do. Even if he hasn't spoken to you yet. God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I thank you that you'll take care of this the way you see fit in the time that you think is best. God, I'm thankful that you can see the future. I'm thankful that you're wiser than me. God, this is what I hope for, and there's nothing wrong with sharing that hope, but I leave it in your gracious and mighty hands. Number four, take a step. You know, sometimes God wants us to be patient and wait. We've done our part and now it's time to just put it in his hands and trust him with a good outcome. Sometimes, though, God is looking for us to take a step of faith while he's bringing his solution. While God many times does things by himself, it's like, wow, God, that was such a miracle. I didn't even know what to do. I was kind of paralyzed, and you just turned it around. He does that. Oftentimes, he works in tandem with our steps of faith. And while it's not always easy, this is often the best way because it grows our faith and we get to see God do incredible things along the way. We do our part and we leave the results in his hands. I think the best way I know how to describe this, as, as my pastor once said, it's about being carefree, not careless. And I think so often we get so sick and tired of worrying about it that we push away from the responsibility we have in it. It's like, I could just care less about this. I'm not going to do anything anymore. It's not about being careless and, and shirking away all responsibility and not taking steps of faith. It's about being carefree as we continue to trust God with the outcome. So as we start to close, I have five application questions that I'd like you to answer personally, whether that's now or when you're home. They're going to be up on the screen, and here's the first one. What do I need to let go of and place in his hands? 
Guys, let's admit it. We all have something. Even if you're not a big worrier, we all have cares that can get the best of us. Again, whether it's about a past, present, future, failure, regret, relationships, finances. I I don't know. We all have something that we need to let go of, whether it's a one-pounder or a 99-pounder. There's something that's on your back right now that doesn't need to be. Number two, we're just going to turn the steps into questions. Is there a specific worry I need to share with God or someone else? And you're going to be specific about it. God, I am worried about this, and here's why. Even if it's like, God, I'm worried about my future, and here's why. I don't really trust you that much right now. He can handle that. He can handle that. Even if it's that extreme in your mind. Number three, am I focusing more on my worry or his character? Am I focusing more on my worry or his character? Number four, what can I thank him for ahead of time? Again, whether it's specific, like he spoke to me, or just when you see in in the Bible where it says he has a mighty hand and that he cares for us, so you're going to thank him more in general. What can you thank him for ahead of time? And then number five, is there a step of faith I need to take first? See, whether you struggle a lot or a little with worry and anxiety, a healthy way to cope and alleviate your burdens. Thank God I can finally take this off. Again, it was what I was carrying affected the way I was feeling. A healthy way to cope and alleviate your burdens is to place your worries in his hands. You know, at the end of uh, between services, someone at first service came up to me and they were like, man, I I care about you, so I was wishing you'd take the, the backpack off like in the middle of the message because you didn't need it and we already got the point. And I said, that was the point. I didn't need to have it on anymore, but I was still carrying it. I think you're seeing the point for your life. You don't need to carry these burdens. God has it but you still are. And again, that's not to feel guilty or terrible. It's time to be relieved. Like, oh my gosh, my God can take care of it. I can let it go. Again, I've tried my best during this message to be very vulnerable about pieces of my life's journey. And I... I want to do one more with you before we close in prayer to where you guys are going to give your burdens over to God. There's typically two things that I think when my unknown future becomes my my present and God's done something great, there's two things that I'm typically thinking. And the first one is this. Wow. Wow. You really do know what you're doing. I worried this whole time. I didn't think it would turn out. Sometimes, guys, this took, um, again, this didn't happen overnight. Sometimes this took a couple years. But I get on the other side of it. I'm like, you really, really know what you're doing. You're a God with a mighty hand and you care. And it turned out good. It didn't feel good for those couple years or a couple months or a few weeks, however long it lasted. But you really knew what you're doing. And here's the second one. And it wasn't a Chris is terrible, Chris feel guilty. But my second thought is more of a thought of regret. Man, God, I wasted so much of my life worrying about this. And you had the answer the whole time. 
help me next time to trust you more so I don't have to waste any more of my life with unneeded burdens. You know, I'd like you to bow your head and close your eyes because I think this is important. I think we need to practice Philippians 4 right now. And here's my prayer. It was my prayer this morning. My hope for you this morning is that God would speak to some of you today during this service about something you've been battling for a long time. Guys, it doesn't matter if it's a word or three words or 30 words. When God speaks, it's incredible. But I'm also here to encourage you, if you don't hear anything in this service, you place it in his hands again tomorrow, on Wednesday, next week, next month, until you hear from him. Because his words are what make the difference. So I want to give you a gift. And again, if you, if you hear something awesome, hold on to that. If you don't, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means God has a specific time to tell you. But I want to give you a gift. And I want you to take a minute or two before the worship team sings to give him your worry and then let him speak back to you. And before you pray and take this time, just remember, after service, if you need to cast your worry on someone, the prayer team, don't do it alone. That's why we're here. If you said yes to Jesus today, don't do it alone. Go to our info booth. We'd love to help you out. But I want you to take a moment or two. You get this gift to share your anxieties and worries with him. And let God speak to you in return. Thank you.